Last time on Left Behind. Sir, there's been another death at the Wailing Wall by fire. You must have come to some conclusions about Jesus as the Messiah. I have not released one iota of my findings to anyone. And Williams, make sure you pay attention at the sign-in today. Yes, sir. I might just have a surprise for you. Hey, uh, Ted, how's it feel to get assigned the most boring hour of television on Earth? It's been a Pleasure to watch what Nikolai Carpathia has, has done. Oh, no, Carpathia's controlling it. So the treaty the world has awaited has now been signed and inaugurated. Great tribulation shall come upon you. Based on Tribulation Force, the second book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents Episode 21 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. What just happened to me out there? Oh, you were wonderful, sir. Really put things in perspective. I sounded like a parrot in a pet shop, not the president. Here I wanted to stand up to him. Instead, I gave away the store. Well, actually, it's much better this way, sir. The global community gets Air Force One, and you get Carpathia... And our pilot. But you get Carpathia's goodwill. You know what that means in the poll, sir? Rob? Yes, sir. Shut up. Yes, sir. You know, uh, Rayford, this could get us both in hot water for seeing you. Well, I needed to talk with somebody. You were the logical choice. I'll, uh, let you out before we get back to Ben Gurion. We can take a cab back. That okay? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll try to grab lunch before Ben Judah speaks. Where do you go from here? Afternoon flight to Baghdad, then a non-stop to New York. Hey, duck down while we go outside. Okay. So, uh, so you're really gonna do this? Uh, we could go no way, but uh, for some reason, God's put this job in my lap. <laughs> uh, you're clear. <laughs> Thanks. Look, as long as I'm not asked to compromise, I guess I'll fly Carpathia wherever he wants. Well, what about Chicago? You gonna hang on to that? No. Um, I don't know if it's really feasible to base out of Chicago. Maybe Chloe and I will have to move to New York. Ray, where does this thing end? Have you thought where we could wind up? Huh. Yeah, constantly. From what I can tell and what Bruce says, the Antichrist won't always be a deceiver. One day he'll show his colors. Kind of like when he knocked off Stonegall and Todd Cotham. Mm. Look, you know, anyone seen as an enemy is in mortal danger. That means every follower of Christ is at risk. I've written stories about people who died for what they believed. That is as close as I ever thought I'd get. <laughs> well, welcome to the other side of the story. <laughs> Anything's possible now, isn't it? What about you? If Carpathia really does buy up the media, where are you going to land? Well, Plank and Carpathia have been throwing out these unbelievable job descriptions. Well, I may have to move to New York, too. Mm. Well, it looks like you and I are in the same boat. <laughs> You looked pale up there today. Almost like you were going to be sick. I was. Ray, it happened again. I saw it in that room at the UN. I saw it today at the treaty signing with Fitzhugh. The same control, the same... Oh, evil is the only word I can think of. Mm. There were only two people on that dais who knew what the treaty really meant. You and Carpathia. Oh, scary. And the rest of them were like lemmings. <laughs> you know, if we survive... That evil is going to make us both fugitives someday. Interesting thought. I saw you, Dad. <laughs> At the Knesset? Yeah. Mm. They panned the row you were in, and the news guy said you were the pilot of Air Force One, Raymond Steele. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce and I got a chuckle out of that. Yeah. And the press wonders why nobody trusts them. <laughs> and they didn't know what to do with Buck. The camera panned by, and they subtitled him... Duke Wilson, former writer, Newsweek. Duke. 
<laughs> and they went over two on us. Speaking of, um, have you seen him? I just talked with Duke, as a matter of fact. He's pretty excited about this rabbi who's on CNN this afternoon. Yeah, he told me. Are you going to be able to watch? We'll have it on the plane. You can get it that far up? Oh, Chloe, the technology on this plane is unbelievable. If I didn't know my passenger so well, I'd actually enjoy this job. Cameron, I'm so glad I found you. Please, you must fly with us to Baghdad. Uh, Dr. Rosenzweig, I can't. Really. I understand your desire for integrity with your work, but you will be working for Nikolai in a month regardless. No one will see this as a conflict of interest. Well, I will. Especially in a month when he owns whatever rag I work for. Don't be negative. Today of all days, come along, marvel, enjoy. This is an historic day. Rejoice with us. Uh, Kiefer Williams, Cameron, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Williams. Uh, oh, I have the information you requested earlier. Commercial flights to Baghdad? Right, right. Well, as it turns out, the plans have changed. Sorry about that. Oh, that's no problem, sir. Uh, we also have a message for you from a doctor... Uh, is it Judah? Dr. Ben Judah? Uh, that's it. Here you go. Uh, he called and asked you to have lunch with him near... Oh, the studio? He, he left a number. Uh, I can't believe I missed him. Hello? Oh, Dr. Ben Judah. It's Buck. Oh, good. You got my message. Uh, I was afraid I'd missed you. I, I saw you at the signing today. I, I did not make myself visible or, or available. Uh, is your lunch invitation still open? It is. Where should we meet? I'll send my driver right over to pick you up. Okay. Uh, but we must hurry. We have such little time before the broadcast. Would you like something to drink before I take your order? Uh, no, we are in a bit of a time crunch. Uh, something quick. Uh, uh, this, for, uh, for both of us. And the bottled water is fine. Yes, sir, I'll bring that right out. Doctor, thanks for being willing to speak with me again. We have shared an incredible experience. I feel a bond with you. <laughs> but now, I am nervous about informing the world of my findings. Do you see this binder? Are those the notes for the broadcast? They are. You're not going to read the whole thing, I hope. Oh, you must understand, I have spent three years preparing this presentation. I know to be compelling, I must speak from the heart, but there are so many references, so much to convey. Gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. If you would allow me. Please, go ahead. There is nothing like the taste of warm bread to a hungry soul. Hmm. Help yourself, the apples are especially good. Hmm. All the produce here is unbelievable. Oh, a recent development. Thanks to a mutual friend. Please, eat while the bread is warm. Hmm. This... This is really good. Son, did you want company before going on the air, or was there something specific you wanted to talk about? Yes, something specific. How does my hair look, by the way? <laughs> you look fine. They'll probably comb out your hat line and makeup. Makeup? I had forgotten that part. No wonder they want me so early. Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> you might be interested to know that I have memorized my presentation. An hour's worth? Well, that seemed quite a challenge three years ago. Now I know I could go on for many more hours, and without notes. And yet you'll take your notes with you. I am confident, Buck, but I am no fool. <laughs> I speak publicly in Hebrew much of the time, but CNN prefers English. That makes it more difficult for me. Oh, I'm sure you'll do fine. Doctor. Oh, thank you. You have just satisfied your end of the bargain. <laughs> so, you needed a little cheerleading. Yes, cheerleading. But I also want to ask you a question. If it is too personal, you may decline to answer. Sure. Last night, you asked for my conclusions on the Messiah question. And I told you, in essence, that you would have to wait with the rest of the world. But let me pose the same question to you. Hmm. Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> About 20 minutes. If it takes longer, we can continue in the car on the way to the studio. <laughs> Maybe even in makeup. <laughs> okay. You already know about my being at a kibbutz when the Russians attacked Israel. The day you lost your agnosticism. Oh, right. Right. Well, some months later, I was on an airplane headed for and London. And that's basically what happened. I asked Christ to change me, to forgive me. That's the real reason I wanted to interview the witnesses, you know, and talk with you. Is all of this makeup really necessary? Now, you don't want to look sickly, do you, Doctor? Mm. Okay, there, you're all finished. Thank you. 
Now just come back after the program and I'll make sure we get that all off. Mm -hmm. I apologize, Doctor, if I rambled on. I realize it's hard to pay attention with your mind on the presentation. No, Buck. I, I should be able to do this in my sleep. So, any reaction to my story? Buck, I... Okay, Dr. Ben Judah, we're ready for a sound check in the studio. We have about five minutes to air. Good, I, I am ready. A few things to keep in mind, Doc. Eye contact, don't look down... Holy cow, are those your notes? I have my presentation memorized. Good, good, good. Now, a lot of people are going to expect some ancient guy with a white beard and Coke bottle glasses. You'll do wonders at the top of the show if you just try to make people feel comfortable. Smile. Try not to look down too much. I assume you are worried this will be the most boring hour of your producing career. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried. I, I just want us to do the best we can. I assure you, we will give your viewers something to ponder by the time the broadcast is completed. All right, let's go. Three minutes, everybody. Doctor, uh, we need you in the studio. I will be right there. You're with the doctor? Yes. You can wash in the control room if you'd like. Thank you. Audio, let's get the doctor mic'd up, please. Now, Mr. Williams, if you would be so kind as to do me a favor while you watch? Uh, sure. Anything. As you are a man of prayer, I would like you to pray that I will say what God wants me to say. Scott, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I want to catch some of this CNN special. Roger, Cap. The rabbi thing? Right. Pretty sure that it put me right to sleep. <laughs> Captain Steele, please. Please, spend a few minutes with us. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. I was hoping to catch the... The Messiah broadcast, yes, of course. Oh, turn it on. Uh, Dr. Rosenzweig and I were just speaking of the rabbi. You all know, our captain believes Jesus was the Messiah. <laughs> uh, frankly, as a non-religious Jew, I think Nikolai fulfills more of the prophecies than Jesus did. <laughs> <coughs> no offense, sir, but I doubt many Jews could believe in a Messiah who was born outside the Holy Land. Ah, well, you see... I'm not that much of a student. Now, this young man on television, he is your religious scholar. My name is Rabbi Zon Ben Judah. I speak to Jews in Israel and around the world. I have come to the conclusion that we may know beyond all shadow of doubt the identity of our Messiah. Our Bible has given clear prophecies, prerequisites, and predictions that only one person in the human race could ever fulfill. Follow along with me and see if you come to the same conclusion I have, and we shall see whether the Messiah is a real person, whether he has already come, or whether he is yet to come. For nearly the entire first year of the project, we tried to confirm the accuracy of the late Alfred Edersheim, a teacher of languages and Grinfield what lecturer What do you think, Bruce? This guy for real? Edersheim well, Edersheim was an impeccable Old Testament scholar. If Ben Judah started there, that's a pretty good sign. So you think he'll bring up anything from the New Testament? He's sticking with the old to start, probably because his main audience is Jewish. But didn't you say there was going to be 144,000 Jewish evangelists? That's what scripture teaches, and at some point, they're going to convert. But how? Are they all going to come to Christ through the witnesses? Let's Nine separate and distinct prophecies the Messiah must fulfill. I do not have time in this brief hour to cover all 109, of course, but I will deal with some of the most clearly obvious and specific ones. We consulted a mathematician and asked him to calculate the probability of even 20 of the 109 prophecies being fulfilled in one man. He came up with odds of one in one quadrillion, 125 trillion. Those are not very good odds. The prophecy <laughs> is eliminate, eliminate. Pardon me, John. Until gentlemen. only one person could ever. Is there a problem, sir? No. Uh, question. How close are we to touchdown? We're making pretty good time. DME has us in the pattern just before the top of the hour, Cap. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, back off the throttles a bit. I don't want this plane on the ground any earlier than five minutes after the hour. Roger. Baghdad Tower, this is Global Community One. Over. We're reducing speed a few knots. Our new ETA is five minutes after the hour. Roger, one. Problems? 
Negative. Uh, just experimenting with the new plane. Roger, one. Thanks, Scott. And we'll and restore take cameras as two? they were in the glorious days of Still, summer. give me that other graphic. Others the one with the Messiah color. will it's make bright. all things new, ushering in a kingdom unlike anything we have ever seen. And yet the prophecies themselves tell us Williams, what Messiah it? will do. Buck. Nice to meet you. Just so how do you think this will play in Peoria? Well, the very I'm first qualification of the Messiah, anything. accepted by our scholars from the beginning, is that he should be born the seed of a woman, not the seed of a man like all other human beings. We know now that women do not possess seed. The man provides the seed for the woman's egg. And so this must be a supernatural birth, as foretold in Isaiah 7.14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Our Messiah must be born of a woman and not of a man, because he must be righteous. All other humans are born of the seed of their Hello? father. Hello? And thus the yes, sinful this seed is of Adam has been passed Yes, he's death. my husband. Not so with the Messiah. Well, I am born very of proud of him. He is... Our Messiah must be born of an extremely Excuse me? rare bloodline. Why I beg your be pardon. He is not a traitor to its faith. He is... I will not listen to this. Goodbye. God himself eliminated billions of people from this select bloodline. So the Messiah's identity would be unmistakable. First, God eliminated two-thirds of the world's population by choosing Abraham, who was from the line of Shem, one of Noah's three sons. Of Abraham's two sons, God chose only Isaac, eliminating half of Abraham's progeny. One of the two sons of Isaac, Jacob, received the blessing, but passed it on to only one of his twelve sons, Judah. Hello? That eliminated Why are you of doing sons this? Israel. Please leave us Prophet alone. Isaiah, years later, singled out King David as another through whom the Messiah would come, predicting that he would be a root out of Jesse. David's father, Jesse, was a son of Judah. The Messiah, according to the prophet Micah, must be born in Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem, Nicola, Ephraim, you were born in Bethlehem, correct? <laughs> Just before you moved to uh, Cluj. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know where this man is going. Can you not see it? It is as plain as the nose on his face. He is going to claim to be the Messiah himself. No, He was probably born in Bethlehem. And who knows what his bloodline is? Most people deny being born out of wedlock. Right? But maybe that is his history. Nick, he can claim his mother was never with a man before he was born. And voila, the Jews have their Messiah. Speaking of a, of a dear friend of mine, he would never claim such a thing. Watch and see. Phone for you, Mr. Secretary General. Oh, who is it? Your assistant. Oh, which one? Ms. Durham? Yes, take a message, My time please. is fleeting, so I want to speed through a few more clear prophecies and tell you what conclusion I have drawn. Isaiah and Malachi predict the Messiah will be preceded by a forerunner. The psalmist said Messiah would be betrayed by a friend. Zechariah said that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. He adds that people will look on the one whom they have pierced. The psalmist prophesied that people would look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. If I had more time, I could share with you dozens more prophecies from the Hebrew scriptures that point to the qualifications of the Messiah. I will give you a phone number at the end of this broadcast so you can order all the printed material from our study. Let me close by saying that the three years I have invested have been the most rewarding of my life. I expanded my study, combing every record I could find to see if anyone has ever lived up to the messianic qualifications. Was there one born in Bethlehem of a virgin, a descendant of King David, traced back to our father Abraham who was taken to Egypt, called back to minister in Galilee, preceded by a forerunner, rejected by God's own people, betrayed for thirty pieces of silver, pierced without breaking a bone, buried with the rich, and resurrected, According to one of the greatest of all Hebrew prophets, Daniel, there would be exactly 483 years between the decree to rebuild the wall and the city of Jerusalem before the Messiah would be cut off for the sins of the people. Exactly 483 years after the rebuilding of Jerusalem and its walls, a man offered himself to the nation of Israel. He rode into the city on a donkey to the rejoicing of the people, just as the prophet Zechariah had predicted. 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Come on, he is son. just. Lay and having out. salvation hey, lowly and riding One on a donkey, to think. a colt, the hold. foal of Sounds a donkey. Important. Tell whoever it is, I after don't three have years of research, Why you say after so? countless cross-references, and after double-checking all of my work, Look, we, I feel we, we've got absolutely sure of my conclusion. My friends, Sir, but, there can be no other option. Trin- but, um, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Yes, but, it was uh, Jesus who recently came to rapture his church, no, to no, take them with him to heaven as he said he would. Sir? I was not among yes. them because I wavered, the phone lines but I have since died. received him as my savior. He is coming back in seven years. Be ready. Here is the number to call no. to obtain L- more lose information. The no, don't put that up. Yeshua no, ben don't Yosef. put that up. No. Jesus, son of Joseph, Thima, is Yeshua Thima. HaMashiach. Go to black. Jesus is the Messiah. Go, go to black. I must have run out of time. Yeah, you were great. Now, where's your car? Uh, hidden in the back, and my driver still doesn't know why. You had this plan all along. <laughs> Come on, this wait, way. Wait, sir. People need to see we you. We don't have time. Doctor, stop. What if they are seeking Christ? You can't go out that Thank way. Paul, I'm getting you out of here. This way. Uh, where is there? Come on. I don't believe what I have just seen. That was anticlimactic. It would have been more dramatic to proclaim himself Messiah. Nikola, I am chagrined by my colleague's lack of judgment. This is old news. Lots of people believe that myth. One Hebrew rabbi converting is not the end of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the approach to Baghdad. We should be on the ground in just a couple of minutes, so please take your seats and get settled. Flight crew, secure the cabin. Looks like we'll be right on the money with the arrival, Cap. Five after. Yeah. Um, thanks for making the switch. You get to see the whole show? Sure did. Sounds like it might have ruffled a few feathers back there. Well, after we land, I'll tell you about it. But, but why, Son? Why? Shh! You know why, my dear. Oh! It has been ringing nonstop. Yeah, I'll get it. Thank you. All the things that they say about you. That you blasphemed your God. I have honored him today. I did not know if you would even make it home. I was in the capable hands of Mr. Williams here, and we were both in the hands of God. I support you. I do, but I fear our lives are ruined. (sighs) Doctor, the lines are going crazy at the phone center, and they've transferred a call through. I think you better take this. I will be right (sighs) back. Shh. This is Rabbi Ben Judah. Rabbi, we spoke last night. My name is Eli. Uh, yes, I, I, I am honored you called. I rejoice with you, son, my brother, in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Many have received him under our preaching. I believe many have turned to him through your witness today as well. I pray it is so, my brother. We are arranging a meeting of witnesses in Teddy Kolek Stadium. We would like you to address us. I, 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 I am overwhelmed at the at the opportunity. What? What is it, so? But frankly, my brother, I fear for the safety of my family and myself. Have no fear. Moishe and I will make it clear. While you are with us, anyone who threatens harm to you will answer to us and to God. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book Tribulation Force by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.